Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where history comes alive with a digital twist. I'm your host, Chuck. And I'm Marco. No, not Polo, but I promise I'll do my best to guide you through today's journey with as much enthusiasm. Today, we're diving into the life of an extraordinary figure from the 13th century, a warrior princess whose story reads like a legend Kutalun. That's right Chuck. In a time when the Mongol Empire was at its zenith, spanning from the Pacific Ocean to the heart of Europe, one woman made a name for herself with her bravery, skills, and, believe it or not, a unique approach to finding a husband. And just a heads up folks, stick around for some quality jokes about 13th century dating advice and how not to pick a fight with a Mongol warrior princess. Plus, we've got some cool merch to talk about later on. But first, let's set the scene. Let's zoom in on Kutulun's early years, back when the Mongol Empire was the equivalent of a medieval superpower, and being born into the ruling family was like winning the genetic lottery, but with more swords and horses. Yeah. Kutulun entered the world stage around 1260, during a time when the Mongol Empire was so vast, postal services complained about the distance. She was not just any noble, she was a direct descendant of Genghis Khan himself, which in Mongol terms, was like being royalty with an extra dash of fierce. Exactly Chuck. Her dad, Kaidu, was a power player in the Mongol political arena. Think of him as the Mongol Empire's version of a rebel prince, constantly locking horns with his cousin Kublai Khan, who was busy running China and trying to expand his Yelp review scores with the Yuan dynasty. Hey, Kublai, how's the empire business going? Oh, you know, just trying to keep the family from tearing it apart. How about you Kaidu? Same old aiming for your throne. Pass the fermented mare's milk will you? Kutulun grew up in this environment of power struggles and political chess, where dinner conversations likely included how to conduct a siege and the best tactics for horse archery. It's no wonder she turned out to be such a formidable warrior, she probably learned to ride a horse before she could walk. And let's not forget her wrestling challenge to potential suitors. In a time when most princesses were learning embroidery, Kutulun was basically saying, match me in strength, or give me a horse. It's the kind of dating strategy that makes you wonder if Tinder would have survived in the Mongol Empire. Swipe left if you can't lift a sword, swipe right if you've got a stable of horses you don't mind losing. With a family lineage steeped in conquest and rebellion, and an upbringing that was anything but ordinary, Kutulun was destined to stand out. Her story isn't just about a princess, it's about a warrior born from the legacy of Genghis Khan, ready to carve her own path in the annals of history. And carve she did Chuck with the edge of her sword and the strength of her arms. Kutulun wasn't just a princess, she was a whirlwind on the battlefield and an enigma to those who thought they could win her over with mere bravery. When it came to Kutulun's talents, saying she was multifaceted is like saying Genghis Khan was somewhat influential. This woman was the Renaissance painting of Mongol warriors, except her canvas was the battlefield, and her paintbrush was a sword, or a bow, or even just her bare hands. Absolutely Marco. While most kids her age were playing with sticks, Kutulun was probably mastering horseback archery and wrestling bears or something equally intense. She was known for her exceptional strength, a skill in archery that would make modern-day Olympians weep, and a grappling technique that ensured no man could best her in combat. And let's not forget her horseback riding skills. Kutulun on a horse was like a shark in water, perfectly adapted, utterly fearsome, and probably thinking about her next meal. She could ride into a storm of arrows and come out looking like she'd just been for a leisurely gallop in the park. Her battle technique was the stuff of legends. Imagine leading a charge, arrows flying past, when suddenly, Kutulun bursts through the enemy lines, grabs their commander with one hand, and gallops away before anyone realizes what's happened. It's like a medieval heist movie, only the loot is people, and the getaway car is a horse. And then there's the wrestling challenge. Kutulun wasn't looking for just any husband. No, she wanted a man who could match her in strength and skill, which in Kutulun's case, was setting the bar so high, it was practically in orbit. Imagine the scene, a suitor steps up, thinking, how tough can she be? Moments later, he's flat on his back, staring at the sky, wondering where it all went wrong, while Kutulun's just warming up. 
It wasn't just a challenge, it was the ultimate vetting process. You wanna marry me? First, survive. It wasn't just about physical prowess, it was about respect. Kutulun demanded and received respect on the battlefield and off. She showed that strength and leadership weren't just male attributes. In a world dominated by men, she was not just keeping up, she was setting the pace. In the horses, Marco. We can't forget the horses. Each failed suitor had to leave behind 100 horses. By the end of her matchmaking saga, Kutulun must have had enough horses to start her own version of the Kentucky Derby, Mongol style. Welcome to the first annual Kutulun Invitational, where the only thing tougher than the competitors is the audience. Through her talents and warrior life, Kutulun shattered every stereotype and became a symbol of strength and independence, all while amassing a fortune in horses. Talk about a win-win. When Marco Polo, the Venetian merchant with a penchant for exploration and storytelling, ventured into the heart of the Mongol Empire, he expected to find wonders and exotic tales. What he didn't anticipate was running into Kutulun, a woman who could probably arm wrestle a bear and win. So Marco Polo, any interesting encounters on your travels? Well, there was this Mongol princess who made me reconsider my life choices every time she flexed. According to Polo, or at least the tales that have trickled down to us, Kutulun wasn't just a fierce warrior. She was a spectacle on the battlefield. She'd swoop into enemy ranks with the grace of a dancer and the ferocity of a storm, capturing prisoners and hearts alike. Though let's be honest, mostly just prisoners. And it wasn't just her combat skills that left an impression. Kutulun's approach to life, blending the ferocity of a warrior with the poise of a princess, was the kind of duality that would make a modern-day superhero envious. By day, a formidable leader, by night, also a formidable leader, but maybe doing some light reading. Polo's tales painted Kutulun in almost mythic hues, a woman so formidable that even the most hardened warriors would think twice before crossing her. And yet, outside the battlefield, she was known for her wisdom and leadership, guiding her people with a steady hand. Here lies the opponent who underestimated Kutulun. He thought he could win. He thought wrong. But life wasn't all war and wrestling for Kutulun. When she wasn't making suitors regret their life choices, she was a key figure in her father's realm, involved in the politics and governance of their lands. Imagine a city council meeting where Kutulun raises her hand to speak and everyone else just nods in agreement, not daring to interrupt. All in favor of increasing the horse budget, say I, or just nod if you're too scared. Unanimous. Great. Her encounters with Marco Polo and other figures of the time highlight a side of Kutulun that often goes unnoticed. Her ability to bridge cultures and command respect not just through strength but through intelligence and diplomacy. She was a warrior diplomat, if you will, navigating the treacherous waters of Mongol politics with the same ease as a skirmish on the battlefield. Kutulun, how do you propose we solve this dispute with our neighbors? The same way I solve all disputes, with a firm handshake and a wrestling match works every time. Indeed, Kutulun's life outside of war was as rich and complex as her exploits on the battlefield. She wasn't just a warrior, she was a leader, a diplomat, and a symbol of strength and resilience to her people. And let's be real, if Kutulun had a LinkedIn profile, it would be the most intimidating yet impressive resume ever. Skills include, unparalleled combat abilities, expert horseback riding, high-stakes wrestling, and turning suitors into stable boys. The final chapter in the tale of Kutulun is shrouded in as much mystery and intrigue as her life. The details of her death remain a puzzle, with various accounts suggesting everything from a heroic end on the battlefield to more sinister theories involving palace conspiracies. The question how did Kutulun die is the medieval equivalent of a cliffhanger season finale. Was it in a blaze of glory, fitting for a warrior of her stature, or was it something more befitting a Game of Thrones episode? The historians left us hanging. What we do know is that Kutulun's legacy didn't end with her death. Far from it. She left behind a legend that would inspire generations. In a world where women's roles were often restricted, Kutulun smashed through the constraints like she smashed through enemy lines. She was like the medieval Mongol version of a superhero. No cape, just a horse and a whole lot of courage. If Kutulun had a comic book, it would be filled with tales of bravery, battles, and the occasional romantic subplot involving wrestling matches.
Her impact extended beyond just tales of valor, she challenged the gender norms of her time and became a symbol of female empowerment. Kutulun showed that leadership and strength are not confined to one gender. She became a role model, a figure of myth and legend, whose story resonates even today. Yeah, in the annals of history, she's like the personification of anything you can do, I can do bleeding. Kutulun didn't just live in the shadow of the men in her life, she outshone many of them, becoming a beacon for women warriors and leaders everywhere. Her story has been told and retold through the centuries, morphing into operas, novels, and even TV shows. Each retelling adds a layer to her legend, transforming Kutulun from a historical figure into a cultural icon, symbolizing the timeless struggle for respect and equality. And let's not forget the academic and cultural discussions she sparked. Scholars pour over her life for insights into Mongol society, while feminists celebrate her as an example of a powerful woman who defied the expectations of her era. Kutulun's lasting impact is a testament to her life story. It's a narrative that transcends time, teaching us about the power of individual agency, the importance of challenging societal norms, and the enduring legacy of a woman who lived on her own terms. So, as we reflect on Kutulun's life and legacy, it's clear she was much more than just a warrior. She was a pioneer, a legend, and a reminder that history is not just written by the victors, but by the bold, the brave, and the unyieldingly resilient. And that, dear listeners, is the story of Kutulun. A princess, a warrior, and an enduring symbol of strength. Her legacy lives on, reminding us that the spirit of defiance and courage knows no bounds. We've reached the end of our journey today, folks. Thank you for joining us on the History AI podcast as we uncovered the life of Kutulun, the Mongol warrior princess who wrestled her way into history. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share the podcast if you enjoyed today's episode. Check out our merch, including the Wrestle Your Way to Success with Kutulun t-shirt, available now. The link is in the show notes. And as a thank you to our listeners, we're offering a 10% discount on your first purchase. Just use the code the History AI Podcast, all one word, at checkout. Until next time, keep exploring the past, and remember, history is not just a story of kings and empires, but of the people, the battles, and the love stories that shaped our world. Farewell history buffs, and remember, if you ever find yourself in a wrestling match with a Mongol princess, maybe just let her win. Step into the thrilling world of sports betting with The Starting Line, an introduction to sports betting. Whether you're a beginner or simply curious, this comprehensive guide takes you from the basics to the advanced. Learn to decode odds, develop winning strategies, and bet responsibly. Get your copy now and transform every game into an adventure. The Starting Line is your first step towards mastering the art of sports betting. Available on Amazon.